Carlisle, beautiful, beautiful young girl, 15, 16 years old. She was a sophomore, bullied so much to the point she thought taking her life was the only way out. Do you hear me? 15, 16 years old, bullied to the point she thought ending her life was the only way out. A beautiful young girl, popular, and took her own life. Let that sink in for a second. Satan knows what this generation is capable of. He knows what these young people are capable of doing. And what it is, is he is so nervous. He is so nervous that if these young people can get a hold of what God has for them and what God has promised for them, if, if they can just, I'm telling you, and, and I don't know if I've shared it here, but at our youth group, we're experiencing revival. Not, to, not, not revival where we're just having consecutive services, you know, day after day after day, but real and true revival. We had, and I tell you, when I get a little comfortable in places, when I feel like family, I preach a little bit longer, but don't get nervous. <laughs> but uh, I'm just, I'm just going to deliver with, to you what God is just dealing with me. And at, at our Haven Youth Group, we were running... It started in our ministry building before I got there, and then it grew to the point where our ministry building wasn't big enough to hold it, and so it got to the point where now on Thursday nights, after our midweek service on Wednesdays, Thursday nights, we had to move in to the main sanctuary to fit everybody in. And so now we have our own service on Thursday nights, 7.30, Abundant Life Tabernacle. If any of you want to come and check it out, once I won, I want to invite you out, bring your young people. You know, it starts at 7.30. You can see me after service. I'll give you all the details. We would love for you to come and see it and experience what God is doing. But going on two years ago now, it was in February of 2017, we had... Two popular girls from Franklin High School get saved and they said they got just they they got they had gotten saved and they had gotten a hold of the fact that I'm not here just to go to church every Sunday and every Thursday. But God had gotten a hold of their hearts and gotten a hold of them and said, you know, I've, I've got something for you to do. And so they started running around all of Franklin, and their, all, the whole Franklin High School cafeteria, and inviting people to church. Sixteen people they brought the first night. Russ Bray, is our, he runs our Franklin bus route on Thursday nights in the vans, and he texted one of them and said, how many do you got coming? I need to know, you know, so I can drive my car or my minivan. And Demi sent him a message back, a picture of her arm from her elbow down to her wrist of names of kids that were, they needed to pick up. They filled a whole 16-passenger van full of kids and brought them on a Thursday night. All 16 of those young people got saved. Then they started telling all of their friends. And Demi and Macy kept inviting more people. But then those 16 told all of their friends. And then those were, then they were telling their friends and say, hey, what are you doing tonight? Well, I'm going to this haven thing everybody's going on about. I'm going to go check it out. They filled, they, there was 40 young people they filled in two vans. Don't do the math. Don't do the math. God's grace is sufficient. They, we were doing God's work. Don't do the math. They were, they were messaging me and saying, I don't know if we're going to be able to fit everybody. Can you meet us somewhere to get some of the kids to take them onto the church so we can have room to go pick up more? They were late to service. They had to pick so many kids up that night. And then on top of that, there were more that drove themselves. They took up nearly an entire section of our sanctuary when they walked in and sat down. Brother Matt, our, our youth pastor, Matt Wilson, he preached 
the salvation message of Christ. He preached the gospel. He preached deliverance. And then when he made the altar call, he said, I need all of my leaders, all my haven leaders come up. We went up to the front and he made the altar call, said, anybody who wants to get saved, come up here, meet us in the altars. You, you get with one of our leaders, get with me, get with somebody, and we will pray you through to salvation. Every single one of those kids that came from the Franklin group got up and got saved that night. And each week, each week, more and more and more got saved. We were running over 120 young people on any given Thursday night and growing and people getting saved. And said it's saved, set free, and delivered from drugs, alcohol, you name it. They were, they were born again and set free from it by the power of Christ. And it wasn't just a, a one time, you know, okay, I'm going to pray and get saved. But it was, you know, and, 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 and you know, you look, you know, and, and not to judge, but, you know, you pray. They, it's, it wasn't that they got pray, they prayed and got saved and said they got saved and then went right back into what they were doing. But the Facebook posts and the Instagram posts and the Snapchats and the text messages that they were posting and sending to people saying, I don't know what in the world this is, but whatever it is, I want more of it because now I don't want to kill myself anymore. Now I don't want to do drugs. Now I don't want to don't want to cut myself. Now I don't now I don't want to keep living the way I'm living but but Jesus has done something radical inside of me and I I just I don't know I don't know how to explain it but he's done something in me and I just want more of it. Real revival. But the thing of it is, and that is wonderful. <coughs> I, I tell it everywhere that I ever preach out. I tell it everywhere that I go what God is doing. But the thing of it is, is that what if Demi and Macy hadn't started inviting people? I, I, I try not to ask myself the question of what if they hadn't because I would hate to think and shudder to think of God not doing what He's been doing. But what if that first Thursday Demi would have gotten intimidated and listened to the voice of fear trying to stop her from doing something for God? What if she'd have said, I can't do it, I'm not good enough. Or I'm scared to do it. I'm popular. I can't, I can't do that. You know, what, what, what will somebody think of me? And that's exactly what the enemy wants to do. Because that is a prime example of what so what God can do if you would just overcome that fear that's keeping you from doing what God is asking you to do. If Demi wouldn't have, if Demi, wouldn't, if Demi and Macy wouldn't have overrode that voice of fear that Satan was speaking into them. Because if you, if you ask me Demi and Macy stories, if I took the time to tell you, you wouldn't believe it. But Demi said... I'm not going to listen to fear anymore. She said, I'm not going to listen to the voice of fear telling me that I can't do it because of my background. I'm not going to be intimidated anymore. Because I'm not going to be intimidated anymore. But I am going to do something great for God because I've got a purpose and I've got a calling that God's placed on my life. And revival broke out because two young girls said, I'm going to be a light in darkness, and I'm not going to be scared anymore. Because, let's see, because I tell you, they got saved long before that this happened. They got saved a good while before all of this revival broke out. So it took some overcoming fear. It took some overcoming intimidation and overcoming a feeling of unworthiness and overcoming the voice of the enemy speaking into their lives. Because I tell you, 
God is real. Christ is real. The Holy Spirit is real. Heaven is real. But at the same time, hell is real. And Satan is real. And his voice is so re- is oh so real as well. And just like I said about Moses and, 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 and even Christ, Satan trying to stop all of that from happening, he's going to do the same right now. He is doing the same right now. Because, like I said earlier, fear is something that I had to overcome. Intimidation is something that I had to overcome. And then I have to overcome a, a daily walk, a feeling of, 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 of second rate. And, 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 and just, just oh, I wake up in the mornings and I got to say, fear, you don't own me anymore. Fear, you're not something in my life anymore. You're, you're something, I've already overcame you. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. And that Christ is in my life now. And you do not have a place in my heart anymore. Because Christ has came down and He has filled me with His Spirit. He has filled me with His love. He has filled me with His peace, His joy, His purpose, and His calling. And fear, you don't have residence here in my life anymore. <coughs> But, okay, so where am I at now? <laughs> okay, so we, but we, but back to, I want to get back to Jacob because there's a, there's a good point, there's a great point in here that I want to get to. We find Jacob here. We find him wrestling with God. <clears throat> so needless to say, we find Jacob here, he's wrestling with God. He's, he's running from Esau. He's on the run because he's already tricked Esau out of his birthright. And he, he, has, he has tricked Isaac out of Esau's blessing. And so now Esau is on the run after Jacob with 400 of his men to chase Jacob down in Scripture. The Bible says that Jacob is afraid and he's distressed. So needless to say, if his older brother is after him with 400 men, after Jacob has done what he's done to Esau, needless to say, yeah, I agree with Scripture that Jacob's probably pretty scared because he knows and he thinks in his mind the inevitable is that Esau is going to find him, catch him, and kill him because of what he has done. So Jacob is afraid and he, he, he's, he's running. And now he finds himself to where he thinks that he's all alone. Because fear will do that. Fear will get you to a point where you feel like you're all by yourself. Where you get to think that, you, that, you're, that, you're, that, that there's nobody else around where you're at. That nobody is anywhere near to where thinking or anywhere near to the state that you're in. But Jacob's not alone. God was with him. Because that's the truth of it. We may, we, may, we may be scared. We may fear what God is asking us to do. We may fear and think that we're not good enough or think that, no, I'm not worthy enough. I can't do this. And it will drop fear if we just keep letting it speak into us. If we listen to the voice of fear, if we listen to that spirit of intimidation and the voice of the enemy telling us that we're not good enough, that there is no purpose for us, that there is no hope for us, that we can't do it, then it will let it will drive us we will let it drive us all the way out by ourselves to where we think we're all alone because I've been in that spot before why I felt like I was all alone that nobody else was knew anything that was going on in my life that I was all by myself I go to church smile Sunday morning Sunday night Wednesday night go home and God just knocking on my heart, saying, you're not alone. You're not alone in this. I don't know who that's for this morning. That even wasn't really where I was going to go just yet. But I know God's dealing with somebody this morning. Hallelujah. He's saying, you're not alone in this. But I'm with you always, even until the end of the world, is what Christ said. That's the, that's the very end. That's what Christ is saying. You're not alone in this. 
You're, you're, you're never alone in this. You may think that you're all alone. You may feel physically all alone. Jacob felt that way. He was.